Welcome back to the channel guys and welcome to my second ever review of a Ferrari. Today we are in Danny's 458 Italia. To say I'm excited would be a massive understatement. I've lusted after this car ever since it first came out. The first photo I saw of this car made my jaw just drop to the ground. It was just, and still is to this day, breathtakingly gorgeous. It might just be my favorite looking non-hypercar Ferrari, I should say, of all time. Truly timeless design, such a sculpted, sleek, and low stance. And with the mods that Danny has done, he's elevated this car to the next level aesthetically. He's lowered it on some Novatech lowering springs. He mentioned he could have sprung for, you know, JRZ or MCS three-way dampers, but considering he doesn't track the car, it just didn't make sense to do that. And there aren't a whole lot of other aftermarket coilover options for the 458. He's also put this thing on some Volk TE37 wheels, JDM wheels on an Italian supercar. Gotta love that. And he's increased the tire width over stock dramatically. Stock is 235 in the front, 295 out back. We are running 275 front Michelin PS4S 305s in the rear. There is a tiny little bit of rub at the front because of this increased tire width. Other specs about this car, we have the amazing 4.5 liter F136 V8 engine naturally aspirated, the last mid-engine Ferrari with just a naturally aspirated V8 and no hybrid assistance or turbos. It revs out to an astonishing 9,000 RPM. It makes 570 horsepower, 398 pound-feet of torque. We have a seven-speed dual-clutch transmission, a first for Ferrari. Pretty massive departure from the six-speed sequential automated manuals that have been used for years. Folks who have actually weighed this car said it weighs well over 3,400 pounds. We're on double wishbone front suspension. We have hydraulic power steering, not electrically assisted. Column mounted carbon fiber paddle shifters. These optional bucket seats, which are fantastic. They're manually adjustable, just like a normal bucket seat, but at least you can incline and recline, which is super nice. Key in, engine start. In terms of the different drive modes, he recommends I put it into race. You can see on this vehicle dynamics display, all the different settings of the car's driving dynamics that can be adjusted. So in sport, it's kind of a middle setting. And then in race, we have the most aggressive traction control set up, or I should say least aggressive without turning it fully off. The electronic rear differential is set to the middle setting. The F1 dual clutch is in the quickest shifting setting, et cetera, et cetera. This has a very cool damper button here on the steering wheel. It turns on the bumpy road mode, which is perfect for the road that we're about to drive on. Pull the paddle to put it into drive. We'll use manual mode for the transmission. Definitely a bucket list item being checked off right now. I'm excited to share this experience with you guys. All right, let's do it. Oh, wow, that dual clutch is quick to downshift. This steering ratio is rapid. Very little input required to get this car turned. doesn't feel that far off in terms of shift speed from a modern PDK. It really doesn't. But really, the star of the show is this engine. Watch this. Just feel 
feels like it's up on its tippy toes. It wants to dance. It's not a grip monster. And that's helped by the fact that we're on a Michelin PS4S street tire. It's a lively car and I love it. The bumpy road mode for these Magnaride shocks, which are stock by the way, works really well. Really good compliance on this very unforgiving road. The suspension actually kind of just falls into the background. I don't really think about it. And that's a really good sign. of steering feel and the steering doesn't load up much in the corners very very light but it's very quick very precise <laughs> oh yes this is everything I dreamt it would be and then some it feels like it's weird I, it feels like I've driven this car so many times in my imagination, in my dreams, and in racing simulators like Assetto Corsa. And this car very much drives how I expected it would. But the actual experience of the G-forces, the damping over the bumps, the quick steering, the ridiculous engine sound right behind my head, all of that, it's absolutely phenomenal. I feel like all my senses are just being blasted by what this car has to offer. as I would like and if there was one weakness to this car's driving dynamics I would say that might be one but outside of that wow incredible absolutely incredible let's do one more straight line pull we're just gonna mash the go pedal gives you that pure, exotic, Italian, high-revving, naturally aspirated V8 induction note. That's what you want in a car like this. You don't have to overcompensate by having a super loud exhaust. This is a top five driving experience for me. Let me know what you think of the Ferrari 458. I'm so curious now to drive the later generations, the 488, the F8 Tributo, 296 GTB and such. With those turbocharged engines and hybrid assistance, I just can't imagine how they could feel as astonishingly exciting as this. It's just an incredible machine. Oh, I would love to own this car. Wow, 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 I am speechless, guys. A big thank you to Danny for letting me experience my second ever Ferrari and by far the best one I've ever driven. That's not saying much. The other one I drove was a 599 with a sequential automated transmission. This is a far sharper and more engaging and well-sorted driving experience. The suspension, the transmission, the steering, yes, it is a little bit of a disappointment. It's not terrible. 
I just wish it loaded up more in the corners. Beautiful interior. I know these cars are kind of known to um, have some issues when a lot of mileage has been put on them in terms of squeaks and rattles and just the build quality. But from where I'm sitting, 40,000 miles on this example, by the way, and it's, it's holding up really well. These seats are super comfortable. HVAC controls look a little bit dated, but uh, who cares when you have this glorious, glorious driving experience. Wow. All right, guys, thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you think of the 458 Italia, and I'll see you guys in the next one.